November symbolically introduces lengthening darkness, colder weather, fallen leaves, for a time to remember the dead of wars past. Remembrance is a solemn act in Muskoka as across our country. Legionnaires and cadets march to cenotaphs. Citizens quietly assemble along the parade route, gather around the cenotaphs themselves. Silence is observed. Wreaths are ceremoniously laid. The bugle sounds. People wear poppies and may in fact, place them in special places, special places like on the tomb of the unknown soldier at the National War Memorial in Ottawa, on wreaths at local cenotaphs inscribed with the names of Muskoka's fallen soldiers. I'm Patrick Boyer, speaking from Bracebridge Public Library. I believe it can add even more meaning to these familiar services and ceremonies of November 11th. If we also remember how this unique occasion began a century ago in the devastating aftermath of the First World War. So for a deeper perspectives on whatever you do or say or feel, on Remembrance Day to honor Canadians who served in uniform. Let's connect those early beginnings with what's happening today in our community. Soldiers from Muskoka had certainly fought in foreign wars before the 1914-1918 war. In Bracebridge, for example, a memorial park was created in the center of town for two local lads who were killed fighting the Boer War in distant South Africa. And Market Street, along the western side of that park, that triangular park, was renamed Kimberley Avenue after Kimberley in South Africa. But no special day was set aside in our district or for our country uh, to remember soldiers who had never returned from foreign wars. It was only after the First World War's fighting stopped on November 11, 1918, that the first time uh, a day was officially sanctioned and designated to hallow the sacrifice of soldiers' lives. It was called Armistice Day because on that date an armistice agreement was signed between the warring countries to stop, uh, stop the fighting at 11 a.m. Paris time. However, Armistice Day was joined with Thanksgiving Day Perhaps it was a notional way of saying, well, the end of the war has given us something more to be thankful for. Well, that rather misses the mark, doesn't it? So, with pressure from war veterans, in the 1920s, Thanksgiving Day was moved to a different day than Armistice Day, November 11th and it was exclusively for commemorating the end of a devastating war that claimed millions, many millions of lives. By 1931, the next step was taken. Armistice Day was renamed for its larger and more solemn purpose as Remembrance Day. By then, Skoka's first legions had emerged organized locally by returning soldiers. Unwilling to talk with family or friends about uh, the war's traumas or their recurring nightmares or their strange awkwardness in civilian life, these men sought understanding and 
reassuring camaraderie with fellow veterans. In different ways and in different timelines, uh, Muskoka's vets then created club-like, pub-like atmospheres for themselves in eight of Muskoka's scattered communities. Their halls offered refuge, halfway houses between army barracks and private homes. Not run by the military, but not subject to constraints of family either. Huntsville's returning soldiers, for instance, formed a Great War Veterans Association in February 1920. Their club uh, room was a room, not a full building, their club room it was paid for by a grateful town and located in the Boyd Block on Main Street, right by the river. It was a hideaway to exchange uh, war uh, tales, uh, discuss jobs and community news and disability pensions, or just settle into a comfortable chair alone to read newspapers and magazines. One GWVA, Great War Veterans Association, business meeting in Huntsville organized their first fundraiser, selling pins on Poppy Day in 1925. That netted $38. Poppy Day, still with us, marked a further improvement in shifting from Armistice Day to Remembrance Day, don't you think? Putting attention directly on those Canadian soldiers who still lay in Flanders fields beneath the poppies, row on row. In Rosso, 14 veterans from the village and surrounding Cardwell and Humphrey townships also formed a Great War Veterans Association. These GWVAs sprouting up locally were actually laying the foundation for a national organization. Founded in the summer of 1926, it was called the Canadian Legion of the British Empire Service League, an early version of today's Canadian Legion. It soon began establishing branches. This caused existing local groups, like the Great War Veterans Associations in Muskoka, to debate whether to join the Canada-wide body. Well, keen for a stronger voice advocating veterans' needs in Ottawa, Huntsville's GWVA members wanted in, applied for Legion status, and in June 1932 got their charter for branch, three, uh, for branch 232. Bracebridge's former servicemen got their charter for branch 161 in 1929. Gravenhurst's Branch 302 was established a year after Huntsville's in 1933. Rossell's GWVA reconstituted, reconstituted themselves in 1938 as Branch 289 of the Canadian Legion. And subsequent formations across our district included Peninsula Branch 489 in Minette, Bala Branch 424, and McTeer Branch 507. Fort Carling needed the clout of more veterans after World War II to establish its branch 529 in 1951. Now, when my book, uh, The Sculpins Fight the Great War, was uh, published this past year, one of the first people to buy it uh, told me that uh, her grandfather had fought in the First World War, and he had returned alive. She knew where he'd fought and had recently visited the battlefields. It's as if he hadn't been in the war, she told me. Those who died have grave markers. Their names are on cenotaphs. There's nothing like that for my granddad or all the others who came home However, 
the very fact that uh, we are here today marking Remembrance Day at all is because those who did survive created the Legion and relentlessly kept alive the memory of their fallen comrades. The living upheld the dead. They honored their sacrifice. Without those who returned in force to Canada, so seared by the Great War that they created the Legion and sold poppies and erected cenotaphs and pushed governments and decade after decade gave us a solemn November 11th time of remembrance, we'd not today so ardently cherish our heritage or their legacy. And there's more. The message, lest we forget, has been and remains the core of November 11th. But the Canadian Legion itself has advanced that concept, rounding out its meaning to complete the circle. Today, Legionnaires urge us to uphold peace through remembrance. And to better address the legacies of war, we speak now not only of those who died, but also of those who served. And we remember, too, the families of those whose uh, loved ones perished in overseas battles. From Bridgebridge Public Library, I'm Patrick Boyer with this Remembrance Day salute to all veterans of wars and to all heritage-minded citizens who know that to embrace our future, we must touch our past.